Well, good afternoon, South Florida. I'm Giovanna, and I am your host of Unlock Your Momentum. We're all about finding the resources and tools that will unlock that road to success. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I am currently doing a special series called F Your Fear. Yes, I would love to say what that F word means, but I can't. But I think you get the gist of it. So we're at part two, and it's all about how fear is what one of the main things that keeps us from achieving what we want. And at the end of the day, if you think about it, every major worry and self-destructive thought is rooted from some type of fear. And in the last segment, I told you around the common seven fears and why, because fear is actually a mask for something else. And what is that? It's the fear of not being good enough. It is the fear of change. It is the fear of making the wrong decisions or missing out on something better or the fear of failure being permanent. And lastly, of being due for a setback. Those are very common fears that we face that we may not know. So with my guest today, we're going to dig into the fear and all about the workplace due to our environment today, the news that we're hearing and how it's uh, influencing us to then panic and think, what happens if I lose my job? What what am I going to do? What if I want to leave my job? So today, it is an absolute honor to bring you my special guest, Vimari Roman. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. I just went straight in. Vimari Roman. I love so, it. I am so happy to have you here. And first, we get to tell our audience, you are a career strategist, a leadership coach, but most importantly, a positive intelligence coach, correct? Yes, that is yes. correct. You are the founder and CEO of Be Productive Coaching. But before we dig into all about you and your profession, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about you? We want to know who you are. Great. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So I am all everything that you said. Um, I was born in Miami, so I'm a Miami girl. And I have to say that because I'm here. Very rare. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I transitioned my career 10 years ago at the age of 37 into uh, first, I opened up my first company as a uh, meeting planner. Okay. My background is in hospitality. I spent 22 years in hospitality. I am a second generation hotelier. My dad was a general manager for hotels. Oh, okay. And at 15, at a very young age, I started my career at one of his hotels working at the front desk. Okay. And my con- I just continued my career and I came to a point uh, several times during mm-hmm. my career that I wanted to transition, but I was a little bit afraid. Fear came in. So that's it, you know the topic that we have. And finally, in 2013, I took the leap. I first opened up Be Productive Meetings and Events. I had a great start. Uh, It was fun because it was in the same industry. Something was missing. And when I really dug deep, I realized that what I was missing was the mentoring and the coaching component of my teams. And that's when, in 2014, I decided to get certified as a leadership coach. Okay. And um, and then that's what brings me to today. Um, I, you mentioned positive intelligence. That happened after the pandemic. Okay. In 2021, I got certified as a positive intelligence coach. And I am working with mid to senior level professionals, helping them transition to the next step of their careers. Um, what we've what I've discovered is that through the start of my coaching, mindset was everything of course and so that's where i feel the missing piece was the positive intelligence Mm. and so now um, i've got that tool in my pocket which helps overcome those fears yes helps overcome you know all those insecurities that people and self-doubt that people you know we all come across absolutely and and thank you for that you said a very key word that caught my attention and that was during your own transition you felt as though something was missing. And that really caught my attention because I believe that 
that's what a lot of people are confronted with. Mm -hmm. And once they come to the realization that something's missing, that's when this fear starts because they don't know to move forward, to stay, what to do. So what I'd like for you to maybe address and identify for our audience is when it comes to this missing piece that you feel within you, what are maybe like the two, three scenarios that are most commonly being faced by professionals in the workplace today? You just mentioned one, something's missing. So do you transition over to a career, a different career? So what other scenarios are you seeing today in the workforce as far as your career that may be creating fear? Mm -hmm. Great question. So prior to the pandemic, it was primarily around growth. Okay. Right? It's climbing the ladder, getting to that next step. Um, some did want to transition out of their the industry or what they were doing because I, of the, the age range that I work with, mm-hmm. which is usually late 30s to like mid 50s. Okay. And so that was before pandemic. After the pandemic, I would say 99% of it is purpose. Yes. That makes sense. It's all purpose driven. I think the pandemic woke us up in regards to, you know, what our values are, how do we want to spend the rest of our lives? And what people found or are finding is that many of us went into careers either by accident or careers that were influenced by our parents, Um, you know, and so we make it work, especially if you're a high performer, Of you just make it work. And then um, for me, I always found that purpose was missing. Mm -hmm. And because, like I said, I was a second generation hotelier, my dad didn't push this on me. It just sort of, you know, I asked for a job at 15. I wanted to make my own money. (laughs) And um, and it just took off. I was really good at it. Right. And so and I don't regret it because I feel like that career is definitely what prepared me to be where I am today. Um, however, it wasn't of my choosing, right? Okay. Like I didn't sit and plan for it. And so what was missing was the purpose behind it. And that's where I feel that what's helped with me and my practice and be productive coaching mm-hmm. in my practice is that I've walked in those shoes. Okay. And so my niche was really easily created by my clients because it's, you know, I was coming across a lot of people that, um, we're having similar concerns. Right? Of course, of course. And let's talk about mm-hmm. these clients now. So you have a client that comes to you, is in alignment with, I want to be in line with my purpose. Mm-hmm. What are the next steps? How how do you work with this client to then have them take this leap, which is a transition, which is extremely scary. Mm -hmm. It's the unknown. And it's really what we fear, which is the fear of change. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about your involvement with clients, because if there's anyone out there who's saying, wow, that's me, Mm -hmm. like, I really want to transition something else. I know that I'm not within purpose, but I wouldn't even know where to start or what to do. Yeah. So first off is... It kind of sounds elementary, but it's like, what is it that you're enjoying about what you're doing? You know, what parts of your career have you truly enjoyed? What have you not enjoyed? You know, sometimes we're really good at things that we don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so finding our purpose is about what brings us joy. Of course. And it's, okay, in your job, in your career, what has brought you joy? And then tying that into, okay, what are some of my natural talents? Um, and, you know, and I do recommend, um, I do utilize the Gallup Strengths Assessment. Oh, love that uh, assessment. Just to confirm that yeah. what I'm intuitive, you know, receiving yes. is in line with what their top strengths are. Okay. And so, you know, for those of you that are not familiar with that assessment, the Gallup's uh, top five strengths is just enough. They have 34 themes, but the f- top five is really what you should look at. And... So now taking the joy, right, what you truly enjoy and looking at that assessment and then looking at it to see if it aligns, right? And most of the time it does. Okay. So your natural talents typically align with what brings you joy because when we're working within our talents, we're happier. Correct. It's feeding us. Right. It's feeding us. Where I've heard exactly that and in addition that during our career development, 
sometimes the focus is too much on our opportunities Mm -hmm. where that's also important, Mm -hmm. but you need to feed your strengths because that's what gives you joy and pleasure, Mm -hmm. which in essence gives you motivation and keeps you going. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Now, if I'm an audience member out there and I am saying to myself, I don't have the luxury to make a transition just yet. How do I do the best that I can in my job, secure my job? Because another worry and fear out there is cuts. Mm -hmm. Am I going to lose my job at any second? So how do we kind of address that in what they can be doing today to just ease that worry so they know that when the time comes, then they can plan to then make that transition? Yeah. Great question. So if if you're worried, you're typically living in fear, right? And so when we're um, worried and anxious is because we're living in the in the future and things can happen. Um, it doesn't you know, things could happen outside of an economic, um, you know, recession. Of so course. it could happen at any time. What I recommend is always being ready mm. and really just continuing to grow and tap into those skills you know if you're curious about something if you have a feeling like oh i wish i knew you know a little bit about that is okay. educate yourself right ask um, connect with the right people so that you can learn a little bit more about what you're interested in and just continuing to um if you start for instance i'll give you an example throughout my career there were times where i wanted a promotion and there were times where I took a promotion without money because I knew that I just wanted to get into that step. Okay. Learn, learn the job, acquire those skills, put them in my, back po- my pocket, and then negotiate later. Yeah. Right? Okay. So it's not always about compensation right away. The compensation will come later. Okay. Um, but it's really just preparing yourself and, and acquiring the skills that you need and follow your interests and, you know, raise your hand. It's, you know, it'll, I'm big on service. Okay. And so to me, when you offer your services, it will come back to you some way or another. And so just if you have to do something for free, do it because you want to learn it. And of course. you want to um, improve a skill or, or, or gain skills. Yes. And I think that you just answered my question because, again, the word that stuck out to me was ready. Mm-hmm. You get to be ready. Mm-hmm. And so what does ready look like? It means planning, maybe possibly mm-hmm. taking lateral positions mm-hmm. or promotions that don't necessarily bring you more money. Continue to find ways to grow. Always anticipate maybe like something else that you could quickly go into Mm -hmm. so that you don't get caught, you know, with kind of with the rug pulled out in front of you, which I can tell you that I very much have experienced that and that is not fun. Mm -hmm. So that's what I heard from you as far as being ready. Anything else that you think that can make them ready or at least be prepared so that they ease Mm -hmm. that worry because you're right, being ready will ease that worry. Mm -hmm. So part of what I offer is also professional branding. What does that include? It includes resume writing, LinkedIn profiles, cover letters. And so, you know, I... I laugh when I'm doing my consultations because I would say 90% of the people that are contacting me are desperate because they're either... Um, they know there, there, there are going to be some cuts, they've been laid off, or, you know, they're desperate. And so that's, I, I recommend not waiting until you're desperate. That's why I say always be ready. Correct. Is, and, de- is desperate because they're waiting too long? Or is desperate? They're not preparing. Okay, they're not preparing along the way. So they're, you should prepare before you even think about worry. So if you if there's an audience out there and you right now are feeling some kind of just not ease, uh, ease, uh, uneasiness, right? Right now is the time to start preparing before that turns into fear. Absolutely. Okay. So prepare, you know, um, ask yourself, what have, what has my value been for this company, right? Where, where um, 
my accomplishments? How do I quantify those ac accomplishments? And then write them down, put okay. them in your resume, get help. You know, even if it's just a friend who's really good at writing, you know, just to help you articulate those accomplishments. And don't wait for the last minute, right? So be prepared. Um, have a list of what those accomplishments are, because sometimes we forget. Okay. And so it's all about preparation. Of course. And you just gave a lot of tangibles that you mm -hmm. say you also help in resume writing and of those sorts with LinkedIn, their profiles. How about when it comes to interviews? Because a lot of people haven't interviewed in a really long time mm -hmm. or they just wouldn't even know where to start and talk about having a fear <laughs> and being nervous <laughs> to go in front of interviews. And you don't know how companies interviews interview today because they all have different processes and ways of interviewing. So do you help on interviewing? I do. Okay. I, I help with interview preparation. I have my process that I go through. I would say if anyone listening wants to walk away with a great tip is work on answering, tell me about yourself. Because that's typically the first question that you will receive at an interview, any interview. And the way you answer that question is really going to determine the, you know, how that interview is going to go. What's the next question that they're going to ask you? And it's such a simple question mm -hmm. when you ask it. But when it is turned back into you, it's not as easy easy to answer, mm -hmm. right? And so that is a great tip. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now I heard you say LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about a little bit around your involvement with LinkedIn, how you are tied with LinkedIn, because I think that's a great accomplishment. LinkedIn today, you know, is really the go-to for professionals to either inquire, educate, learn, find connections, all of that. So tell us a little bit about your partnership with LinkedIn. What do you do with that? Absolutely. So when I started to work, I started coaching first, and then the professional branding came after that. Um, it came after my niche was formed and my clients, you know, I also have a, I was director of sales and marketing for hotels. Mm -hmm. So I have a sales and marketing background and I'm always thinking about branding. Okay. And so as I was coaching my clients, I want a question came up. It's, you know, let me see your resume. Let me look at your LinkedIn. Let's ensure that your professional brand is truly aligned with that next step that you want to take. Got it. And so when I started to look at the resumes in the LinkedIn, I realized mm -mm, this is not working for you. This is not aligned with the next step. Mm -hmm. And so I started to offer uh, the professional branding for my coaching clients. Mm. And then my coaching clients started to refer their family and friends to me just for the branding part. Because not everybody knows what coaching is, but everybody oh. understands what a resume is True. or what Good LinkedIn point. profile is. And so I said, okay, well, maybe I should add this as a service to my practice. And I added it as a separate service. So okay. if someone wants to uh, come to me for branding, mm -hmm. they can without having to go into the coaching component. Mm. Many times they don't realize they need the coaching. So um, I started to utilize LinkedIn. Um, I became a LinkedIn, I signed myself up for um, a professional so that people can uh, send me proposal requests mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and just got really involved with LinkedIn. And then in 2019, LinkedIn reached out to me, which I was really surprised, but they reached out to me and recognized me as a LinkedIn expert and asked me to become one of their contractors um, for a program that they were running, where it was I would review resumes and review LinkedIn profiles for some of the premium members and give feedback. Wow. And so uh, that's my connection with LinkedIn. I'm not doing that as much anymore okay. just because I don't have the time. Okay. Uh, but I was recognized in 2019 as a LinkedIn expert. Wonderful. And really, if, if I can tell our audience members, you have her name there. Follow her. Go click on her LinkedIn profile because you write a lot of like blogs, articles that are extremely valuable and resourceful. And it hits right on the sweet spot that we're talking about today around fear, around productivity, around stress, everything that really surrounds fear. So definitely, you know, click on, on her profile because you will get a lot of resources and uses. Now, I'm going to continue on this LinkedIn topic. So 
you ha- you know your way around LinkedIn. So from your experience, any tips out there for them around LinkedIn? It could be anything on your profile, how you search for jobs, how you interact, send messages, anything that comes to mind in giving some tips around LinkedIn. So the first thing is LinkedIn is not brand new. It's been around for a very long time. And so it's just now picked up, especially throughout the uh, pandemic, is use it be active on LinkedIn. So instead of spending time and wasting time on Instagram or Facebook, it's spend your time on LinkedIn. Make sure that you're posting, that you're liking, that you're sharing. You don't have to write, but share. Um, Optimize your LinkedIn profile because it does have SEO capabilities. And if a recruiter is searching on LinkedIn for Uh, Mm -hmm, professional mm -hmm. whatever they will you will come up in searches if your LinkedIn profile is optimized and so what could you do make sure that it's a public profile there's no reason for it to be private there's you know your that's so what does that mean mm -hmm. tell me what a private versus so some people will have their private their profiles private which means that if i look them up on linkedin i may not see their picture or they may not show up okay so it doesn't have to do with follow versus connect no okay no no it's just about the privacy got it settings and so why are you on linkedin if it's private true (laughs) yeah (laughs) very true make it a public profile show them your picture have a professional picture it doesn't have to be professionally taken it just needs to have good lighting you're looking at the camera because we're connecting (laughs) it's it's all about connecting and then my other tip for linkedin is that linkedin will automatically put your current title underneath your name and that's prime real estate Mm -hmm. it also comes up in searches and so be creative there that's a perfect area for you to really say who you help how you help or you know maybe put a few keywords with what your strengths are okay and i have seen some linkedin profiles where the 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 company and the job title in which they were in is on there, but then they don't list what their responsibilities are. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Do you treat your LinkedIn like an actual resume? You do. Okay. Because it's your online resume. Okay. And so remember, recruiters are on LinkedIn and, you know, we're in an age where social media, it's it right people are googling us okay. people are looking for you you know and they're go- they're going to make assumptions of who you are before they even meet you and so you're in control you can be in control of that okay and one way to be in control is to have your linkedin profile optimized make sure that your some of your you don't have to put everything that's on your resume mm-hmm. um, and the reason i say that is because you want them to reach out for you to reach out to you for your resume. Of course. And so you want to keep a a few things um, on your resume that are a little bit different from LinkedIn. But do write a little bit about um, what you do and most importantly, what you've accomplished. I think your accomplishments is really what sets you apart. Yeah, I I would absolutely agree Mm -hmm. as well. Now, we've been speaking a lot around one-to-one and your clients and really helping the individuals get over fear, but I don't want to dismiss your work also with businesses. So if there's a business owner that has employees, doesn't matter how many, it could be three, it could be 20, it could be 100. Talk to me a little bit about your work with businesses. What do you do with them? Yep. How do you offer va- value? Yes. So the value comes in uh, with the positive intelligence. Okay. That's where, that's my baby. That's really what I've been working on with businesses uh, because you know, a lot of what people have also realized during the pandemic is that it's all about purpose mm-hmm. and life, work-life balance, mm-hmm. right? Um, I personally say there's no such thing as work-life balance. Mm-hmm. Um, we're one person, yes. a whole person, so it's life balance. I would agree. Yes. And so work is just part of our lives. And so um, it's really, I'm working with organizations to help them understand that because when organizations really invest in their people and recognize that we do have a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, People are feeling lonely. People are feeling like they don't have purpose. And as an organization, you can provide that. And so um, our positive intelligence uh, for groups Mm -hmm. and for organizations helps 
helps with that. Um, it also, you know, for organizations, EQ is really important, emotional intelligence. And positive intelligence actually correlates with the 18 dimensions of EQ. EQ, if you bring someone in for a training, it will offer great insight. They will okay. understand where their scores are. Okay. What positive intelligence does is that it actually increases your EQ. Okay. And there have been studies that if you practice positive intelligence and mental fitness, you know, our, our mind is, you know, having a growth mindset is because our mind is constantly growing. Growing. And if you're exercising yes. it, those muscles in your brain are actually <laughs> yes. increasing, yes. Yes. right? So no different than going to the gym for your body. Let's go to the gym for your brain. Exactly. So like a neuro gym kind of thing. Yes. Yes. And so that's what I'm offering organizations. I also also help out with um, if they're looking to really uh, succession planning, for instance, right? Okay. If they're looking to see, okay, who, who are my players, my top players that perhaps we're not recognizing okay. and need to place into um, other positions. Very nice. Very nice. So as we start wrapping up, what I'd like to do is go ahead and put your contact information on the screen so that if anyone wants to get a hold of you, they certainly can. I believe that we're going to put your website on there. Yes, there it is. Um, BeProductiveCoaching.com if anyone wants any further information or just wants to inquire and gain some resources. Like I said, please, you know, um, connect with her via LinkedIn. She has a lot of resources and tools. And why? Because today we want to eliminate anything that's causing worry or self-destructive thoughts that are feeding more into this fear. We deserve more. We deserve to be uh, at peace and be able to move forward in whatever it is that we want. So with that, how I always like to ask the question of if there's one message that you would like to leave the audience with pertaining to really your craft and what you do to help others transition in their career, help them while they're in career, prepare for a career change, what would you leave them with? Oh, there's so much. <laughs> okay. So I think, you know, what we've recognized is that life is, you know, is short, right? Mm -hmm. um, purpose is important. So do not ignore that, you know, I feel like it's a constant knock mm -hmm. on your brain, on your heart, you know, when you're not in your purpose. And so do whatever it takes to follow your purpose. Um, if you're not sure of what your top talents are, your natural strengths are, you know, get help. And if you can't afford to hire someone, you know, like me, a coach, then, you know, ask around, you know, uh, perhaps contact five people that you've worked with and ask them, you know, what value do I bring? And you'll be surprised at the answers that you will receive. But do not just ignore that purpose yes. knock because yes. we have one life to live and fear is always going to be there. Absolutely. You know, I've had Absolutely. every single fear you've, <laughs> you've, <laughs> you've talked about. Um, it's always going to be there. Um, but, you know, fear has two, right? So it's uh, false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. What I like to say is face everything. Oh, right? Love that. And run, right? So, so just face everything, yes. right? Yes. And that... And, goes perfectly with the quote that I like to end these, this series with. But before I do that, I want to thank you so much, Vimati, for coming today and being really an expert and a tool and a resource base for all of us, especially for those that right now are worried about their profession, their career, and what's going to happen. So thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. And we probably could do different segments oh on God. different <laughs> subjects of so many things. 30 minutes um, flies. <laughs> yes, yes. So there you have it, South Florida. This this is the second part to F your fear on unlock your momentum. And if there's anything that I want to share with you around fear is one of my favorite quotes from Maya Angelou. And it says, I feel fear all the time, but I am not afraid of anything. Mm. We will see you next time.